nothing in your life just happen. Your life is not over. You're not too old. It's not too late. God knows about your limitations. Whatever God has predetermined to happen will come to pass. And no devil in hell has ever been able to abort the purpose of God not once. When you feel like giving up, don't. When you're thinking about giving up, don't. When it look like you ain't gonna make it, keep going. When they tell you you can't, come on, man, who are they? When they tell you you're not going to make it, don't believe them, man. Don't believe them. You got to be relentless. People leave you because they're not joined to you. And if they're not joined to you, you get super glue and you can't make them stay. Let them go. Don't worry about the people that God has removed from your life. He saw things you didn't see. He heard conversations you couldn't hear. And he made moves you wouldn't make. We all have things happen to us in life that we don't understand. We worked hard, but we didn't get the promotion. Or people that have turned on us. It's easy to live frustrated, fight against everything we don't like. We think that it's holding us back. But Psalm 119 says, Everything serves his plan. The betrayals are serving his plan. The person that walked away is serving his plan. If that wouldn't have happened, you couldn't reach your destiny. The person that walked away wasn't a coincidence. It was God moving them away. We need to see difficulties in a new light. You can't reach your destiny without opposition, without betrayals. Why are you upset over something that's designed to move you forward? Don't give up. Don't give up. Stay in it. Stay focused. Quitting guarantees the failure. Once you quit, it rules out any chance of succeeding. The mere waking up every day, putting the next foot in front of the next foot, at least keeps you in the game. But you can choose in the midst of all of this that's going on to be happy in spite of life's challenges. See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. Well, guess what? There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. We have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist, or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I have never met anybody who became incredibly successful in any area of their life until they had suffered and sweated and sacrificed and kept their focus and fought through tears and trials and tests. And if you have a dream and you commit to it, it will come to pass. You must have patience and engage in consistent action. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where people want instant gratification. They want it right now. No, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's a system that if you work the system, it works if you work it. But make no mistake about it. It's hard. You are the determining factor. The people that make it in this world look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they create them. It's you that you must take personal responsibility to make it happen. It's hard. No, easy is not an option. However, ladies and gentlemen, what you will discover is that it's worth it.
write down five reasons of why it is worth it for you to become a diamond, to experience that level of achievement. What is it that will give you the drive? What is it that will ignite the courage in you to get up and come back again and again and again? How is it that you would be able, what reasons that can tap in to that deep down feeling that goes to your gut, that no matter how many times you get knocked down, that you're coming back? All of us are in like a little sailboat. And it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination, it's the set of the sail. So jot this phrase down, it's one of the best to understand. Kids need to understand it. The same wind blows on us all. The wind of disaster, the wind of opportunity, the wind of change. The wind when it's upside down, the wind when it's favorable and unfavorable. The same wind blows on us all. The economic wind, the social wind, the political wind. The same wind blows on everybody. The difference in where you arrive in one year, three years, five years. The difference in arrival is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the sail. And that's what learning is all about. To set a better sail this year than last year. To set a better sail. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. You say, well, the Democrats must have finally gotten power. No. No. It was not a political change. Here's what changed the second six years of my economic life. It was my philosophy that changed. The set of the sail of better thinking, correcting the errors of the past and picking up new disciplines for the future. That's all I had to do at the end of the first six. Correct the errors of the past and then pick up some new disciplines for the future. And my total life changed. The second six years was totally different than the first six of my working life. And guess who can do that? Anybody. Now you can keep on the same path for the next couple of years as you have the past two. But if you wish to, if you wish to, and maybe everything's okay for you and you don't need to, but if you need to make some changes, I'm telling you, you can start doing it today so that the next two years will be drastically different than the last two. And anybody who wishes to do that can. And you can do it between ages 40 and 43. You can do it between ages 13 and 50. You can do it between ages 60 and 62. Any two years, any five years that you wish to drastically change from the previous five, you can do it. If you wish to. Now, this isn't written. This is not a law. Here's what it's called. Opportunity. If you don't know, you can drastically change your income, change your future, change your health, change your marriage, change everything. If you don't know that, some people then go year after year after year after year not making much change simply because they didn't get to the class. They never read the book. They never went to the seminar. They never made the discovery. They didn't seek for the knowledge of how could I make my life better. And if you just rock along, I'm telling you it's okay. Anybody can live any way they choose, but I'm here to tell all of you that if you wish to, it's possible to make the next three years totally different than the last. And all you have to do is just a few things. So if you got that one now, it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your income. It's not the blowing of the wind that determines your fortune. It's the set of the same. And that's why we gathered here today. Maybe I've got some ideas that'll help you with a couple of little things about setting the sail of your thinking that might drastically give you multiplied more benefit the next three years than you've gotten in the last. Many of the challenges that you're facing now, they don't have anything to do with now. It's positioning you for something in your future. You will see how God will begin to connect the dots. It may not make sense now. The betrayal, the closed doors can be discouraging. You have to keep reminding yourself, it's not working against you, it's working for you. Sometimes God is not removing the obstacle because he's using the obstacle to get us prepared. We don't grow in the good times. We prefer that much better, but we wouldn't reach our potential. We grow when it's difficult. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Once I understood this, this altered the course of my life. Don't wish it was easy. Wish you were better. And here's the big one. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skill. You don't need less problems. You simply need more skills. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. Accept the challenge because you can't grow without a challenge.
You can't get rich without a challenge. You can't fly without gravity. You have to understand the challenge. But that's the key, is to now develop wisdom to overcome the challenge. Don't wish for less challenge before wisdom. Then here's one more philosophy to help change my life forever. You can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Humans can do the most remarkable things no matter what Philosophies that changed my life. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except human seems to operate simply by instinct in the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer, every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice of something that might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next life. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one, I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No, no, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now, here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do. Simply because you didn't design a better destination. Key phrase, up front, the decisions are easy. Now, sometimes after we've lived a few years now to repair our mistakes and get back on track, it seems like a tough job. But here's the key, and it's so exciting to talk to the teenagers. Make the note, if you start early, the fortune belongs to you. If you start early, all fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late and still arrive with some good treasure and some good things. But when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired, too weary, and too ill. And say, look, I don't have much time left. It's not going to happen for me anyway. It's easy to take that attitude. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years. We've got the time the next 20 years. We've got the time the next 30 years to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's going to change everything. So five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place, a place of productivity, a place that will make you feel good about yourself, a place that will give you honor and respect, a place that will give you influence to touch other people, 
five years from now that you couldn't do today? Where will you be in five years? Key phrase, we go the direction we face. We go the direction we face. If you start designing something at the end of this direction, sure enough, you will start going the direction you face. Next phrase, direction determines destination. Destination is not determined by hope. It's not determined by wish. Destination is determined by direction. You cannot change destination overnight. You cannot change destination overnight. Which means you can't arrive at a five years from now place tomorrow. But here's what you can change today and overnight. You can change direction. And it is so fascinating what a little small change of direction will do. Discipline, a few decisions in learning, a few decisions in change of behavior, change of habit, a few decisions in setting goals that you've sort of let drift before. Like I did at age 25, didn't have a list. I immediately started to change that. And I immediately started to change my direction. In less than seven years, I was a millionaire. And that was just my economics. But I am so thankful for the circumstances and whatever else arranged it for me. Some things are arranged. We don't even know how they've occurred for you to be here. Do you imagine the chain of circumstances that caused you to be able to sit in this auditorium today? It's amazing. This had to happen and this had to happen. This door had to close and this door had to open. And all of those things for me to be here, for you to be here, I just didn't drop out of the sky, right? And you arrived here from all kinds of directions. Here we are. And so we just say, wow, part of that's a mystery and we let it be a mystery. We don't even try to figure it out. We just say, wow, it's incredible. But now that we're here, how could we collectively and individually affect each other's lives? It's by doing just what we've done. Study, learn, teach, shake hands, trade stories, and do all the stuff. So that we can help other people as well as ourselves to make that small journey to a new direction. So jot that down. It's only a small journey to a new direction. Guess how quickly you can change your health? By starting to eat an apple a day. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say you've been ill long enough You've had health problems long enough and you say, that's it. That's over. I'm going to now start a program. You don't have to really revolutionize your whole health life. Just start with an apple a day. You say, well, is it that simple to change your health life? And the answer is yes. The key is just to start. You know, you pick up a book on good health and you get halfway through the book and it says, now, dear reader, set this book aside, fall down on the floor and see how many push-ups you can do. And then it goes on to say, and if you have not done that, why not give this book away? It looks like you're not going to do it. Come on. You don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. And an apple a day committed to finally having a health program that'll make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years. All you got to do is munch on that first apple and nobody even has to be around you. And you don't have to announce it to the world. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's going to make me so healthy. I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. Munch, munch, happy, happy, self-esteem off the schedule. Now. If you eat an apple the second day, you become almost delirious. Say, wow, I'm on my way. Somebody said just two apples says, look, you don't understand. Not only did I do it yesterday, I've done it again today. This is really proving to myself with no audience, no microphones, no nothing, just you and yourself. You've convinced yourself, I'm on my way to the healthiest I ever have been. I'm starting a new life. This is the second day I love her. That's how easy it is to change your life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. And maybe by health or by whatever 
other things we can think of to do. You just get back on a better track. How we feel plays such a major part in our future. First, it's what we know so we can make wise decisions about danger and opportunity. But second is how we feel. First, it's how you feel about the past. You need a healthy attitude about the past so that you use it, not live in it, but use it. Not carry it like a burden, but let the wise lessons you learn from the past now serve as fuel to furnish the future. Next, a good attitude about the future. You gotta set your goals. We look back for experience, but we look forward for inspiration. We must be instructed and inspired. No better inspiration than to set your goals. I started this process when I was 25. Literally rocked my world, changed my life. I had no idea it was so simple. Here's how simple it is. Decide what you want, write it all down. Make a list of the people you want to meet. Make a list of the books you want to read. Make a list of the classes you want to take. Make a list of the skills you want to learn. Make a list of the cities you want to visit. Make a list of the investments you want to have. Just make these lists. Here's the next key now. Start checking them off. Put a lot of little things on some list so you can start checking off something right away. That's part of the fun. Here's what's next. If you check off something major, celebrate. Because that inspires you to make a longer list of goals. And put everything on your list. Little things insignificant to someone else important to you. I put a little revenge on my first list. My mentor said it was healthy. Some of the people who said I couldn't succeed, kid from the farms of Idaho, they went on my list. Couldn't wait to get my new car, drive it up on their lawn. Say, oh, pardon me, here's the money to have it fixed. Just little satisfaction. My Japanese friend, Toro Ikeda, San Jose, California, put on his first list, a Caucasian gardener. Way back then, everybody had a Japanese gardener. Everybody, Japanese garden. Said, I'm Japanese, I'm gonna have a Caucasian garden. <laughs> okay, little satisfactions, right? Set your goals, decide what you want, write it down, start checking them off, it's powerful stuff. Next, it's how you feel about everybody. If you want to be a leader, true leader, entrepreneur of the highest order, well-respected, unique in your field, here's number one, how you feel about everybody. And this is philosophical as well. You cannot succeed by yourself. So a unique sense of appreciation of everybody goes with the territory of leadership. It takes everybody for each of us to be successful. One person doesn't make an economy. One person doesn't make a symphony orchestra. It takes everybody. For this gathering today, all of you had to be here to make this gathering. Everybody. If one of you were missing, there wouldn't be this many people here. Everybody to make something work. For the office. Whatever. The enterprise takes everybody. The gift of America is everybody who came over the last two, three hundred years, bringing with them their gifts. No country has become such a depository of the gifts of the world like America has over the last two, three hundred years. People coming, bringing their gifts, gift of language, gift of learning, gift of politics, gift of government, gift of medicine, gift of healing, gift of music, gift of the work ethic. All this came in steady streams from all over the world, making us unusual because of the gifts that were brought. And to understand that and appreciate it now gives you open access to the market that's available to make your fortune. Now, what I love to do is go back where these gifts came from. Not long ago, I was in Rome, had a thousand people in my class. Someone suggested Jim Rohn loves the music of Andrea Bocelli, the blind opera singer from Italy. So when they introduced me, I walked to the podium and all 1,000 of these Italians stood up and sang for me one of Andrea Bocelli's songs. In true Italian style. Years. 
I described it to my uh, grandchildren later. I said, here was the scene, a choir of a thousand and an audience of one. And that was me. I thought, here's where some of these gifts came. The gift of poetry, the gifts. So learn to appreciate the gifts. Now the last attitude is how you feel about yourself. Nothing more powerful than self-esteem, which creates self-confidence. The greatest steps towards success come from self-confidence. And that comes from self-esteem, doing what you know you should, so that at the end of the day, you have high, high self-esteem. If I could give the children of the world a box for Christmas for every day, I'd give them a giant box of self-esteem. And they'd open it up and see that it doesn't make any difference what you wear, who you are, what you've done, what you own, what you drive. It's how you feel about what you're doing at any given moment in time. Self-esteem is the deep down inside the skin feeling of your own worth. And that's why, as the second winning attitude, it is the single most important quality, in my opinion. It's the internalization of value. Doesn't make any difference what you're doing. Doesn't make any difference what you did last week. Doesn't make any difference what you're going to do tomorrow, but it, it makes a difference of how you feel about your potential. It's that feeling. You know, I give programs for young people in the summertime, and they come to youth camps, and I've been trying to help young people understand that it's not designer jeans for tots, and it's not uh, what you're driving or what you're wearing, it's how you're feeling. That's why peer pressure is so strong. You want to belong to a winning team. There'll never be a human being more important than another based upon what you got or how you look or what you do. It's how you feel about yourself. And that's the most important thing, the internalization of value, internal standard, not comparing yourself down or up with anyone, using competition to keep you honest, keep the quality in and the price right, and setting internal standards and giving your wins away. The three greatest fears that I've come in contact with in my life are the fear of rejection, which is the greatest fear that anyone ever has. It's greater than the fear of anything. The fear of being made a fool of in front of your peer group. Why do you suppose the pressure is on young people to dress, act, and look a certain way? It goes right up into adulthood. We're all the same. We're afraid to have people laugh at us. That's why in kindergarten, they raise their hands. They don't care if they're wrong or right. They just want to answer anything. By the time you get to the fourth grade, you begin to worry about people snickering at you and being wrong. By the time you're in high school, you say, I ain't answering. And when you're a grown-up, you always play it safe with the same kind of friends who have the same beliefs. And that's the way it is. The fear of rejection becomes the fear of change. I don't want to change and set an example. I might get criticized, I might get ridiculed, and it becomes the fear of success. And through all of my life, the one thing I've been afraid of most is making it, <laughs> of winning. You know why? Because where we grew up and how we were and how it was, it didn't seem right for us. And so I had permanent potential. I just kind of majored in minors and did things that were tension relieving instead of goal achieving. And I made a lot of excuses, uh, the fear of rejection. I, there was always a reason. And success always stood in my way. They asked me to publish a book, so I procrastinated. See, procrastination is caused by the fear of success. You know if you did it, you'd win and you'd be better. So I didn't do it so I could be my comfortable self. And it worked out right. I painted the fence and walked the dog. Next thing I knew, the opportunity passed. It felt so good whew, just to be me again. You and I aren't afraid to be rejected because we've learned one thing about self-esteem. Since self-esteem has nothing to do with performance, it has to do with potential. You and I can separate who we are from what we do. And the one thing you learn with high self-esteem in life is you never carry failure forward. Failure is always left where it belongs as a learning experience, a stepping stone instead of a stumbling block, a temporary inconvenience. I've decided the one way you can spot a winner or loser in the making is the way you project yourself, your value. You always project on the outside. Discipline, a few decisions in learning, a few decisions in change of behavior, change of habit, 
a few decisions and setting goals that you've sort of let drift before. Like I did at age 25, didn't have a list. I immediately started to change that. And I immediately started to change my direction. In less than seven years, I was a millionaire. And that was just my economics. But I am so thankful for the circumstances and whatever else arranged it for me. Some things are arranged and we don't even know how they've occurred. For you to be here, do you imagine the chain of circumstances that caused you to be able to sit in this auditorium today? It's amazing. This had to happen and this had to happen. This door had to close and this door had to open. And all of those things, for me to be here, for you to be here, I just didn't drop out of the sky, right? And you arrived here from all kinds of directions. Here we are. And so we just say, wow, part of that's a mystery and we let it be a mystery. We don't even try to figure it out. We just say, wow, it's incredible. But now that we're here, how could we collectively and individually affect each other's lives? It's by doing just what we've done. Study, learn, teach, shake hands, trade stories, and do all the stuff so that we can help other people as well as ourselves to make that small journey to a new direction. So jot that down. It's only a small journey to a new direction. Guess how quickly you can change your health by starting to eat an apple a day. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say you've been ill long enough. You've had health problems long enough and you say, that's it. That's over. I'm going to now start a program. You don't have to really revolutionize your whole health life. Just start with an apple a day. You say, well, is it that simple to change your health life? And the answer is yes. The key is just to start. You know, you pick up a book on good health and you get halfway through the book and it says, now, dear reader, set this book aside, fall down on the floor and see how many push-ups you can do. And then it goes on to say, and if you have not done that, why not give this book away? It looks like you're not going to do it. Come on, you don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. And an apple a day committed to finally having a health program that'll make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years. All you got to do is munch on that first apple and nobody even has to be around you. And you don't have to announce it to the world. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's going to make me so healthy. I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. Munch, munch, happy, happy, self-esteem off the scale. Now. If you eat an apple the second day, you become almost delirious. Say, wow, I'm on my way. Somebody said just two apples says, look, you don't understand. Not only did I do it yesterday, I've done it again today. This is really proving to myself with no audience, no microphones, no nothing, just you and yourself. You've convinced yourself, I'm on my way to the healthiest I ever have been. I'm starting a new life. This is the second day I'm on my way. That's how easy it is to change your life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. And maybe by health or by whatever other things we can think of to do, you just get back on a better track.